I know it's been a little while since this phone came out, but I still wanted to bring you my review format on this particular phone. And since one of my friends actually asked me which one of the Galaxy S devices she should get, clearly this is still a highly relevant device. So let's go ahead and talk about it. It's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? These are my complaints and takeaways with the Samsung Galaxy S21. If there's one trend that I have really enjoyed lately from Samsung, it's their commitment to more stylish options for their marquee devices. Now, I could nitpick that the fun colors tend to be for the lower end models of each line, but I have to admit that having what has been affectionately called the Thanos edition of the Galaxy S21 is a welcome change of pace from the all matte black Galaxy S21 Ultra. There are a few other colors that are available with some compelling choices for those of you who like to have the phone in your pocket to be as highly expressive as possible. That is, of course, before you slap a case on it. But you know what, I have to give Samsung extra props for this camera bump. After last year's horrifying take on it in the Galaxy S20 Ultra, Samsung decided to basically melt the bump into the frame, one that helps strike the two-tone look of the phone depending on what color you choose. It's a fantastic choice that even a couple of months later is still very eye-catching. Also, special shouts out go to the S21's ergonomics. While they have improved across the lineup, the smallest of the three phones is still the most comfortable choice for people with smaller hands like myself. I don't think I'll ever lobby a takeaway or a complaint on the size of a phone anymore, unless it was like egregiously small or really large, uh, because I've grown accustomed to bigger screens during the work from home era. But you get plenty of room still to play on this phone even if it is the smallest sibling. What could get a little bit polarizing in the S21 design though is the material choice. I've seen people have reactions in both extremes whenever the word plastic comes up. So yes, the backing of the Galaxy S21 is made of plastic, but it's made in such a way that you barely notice. The matted appearance minimizes the smudges that you would get on a glossy surface while the build overall still feels pretty sturdy. It's easy for some people to assume a phone will feel cheaper when it uses plastic, but honestly, that's just not really the case here. Instead, I think we should just be happy that such an attractive phone manages to turn heads without compromising too much on the quality. And then you get the heart of the Galaxy S21, which is the Snapdragon 888. It should come as no surprise that this phone is a top performer, capable of taking on daily tasks, media, games, and all of that without any problems. This is despite, perhaps impressively, the phone having 8 gigabytes of RAM, which can strike some as lower on the smartphone spectrum that can go all the way up to like 16 these days. But I haven't had any issues with the phone, enjoying in particular the new release of League of Legends Wild Rift. Not to mention Samsung's own software suite is pretty robust, injecting a lot of features, settings, and capabilities to the base set of apps that you might be installing from the Play Store already. A lot can be going on all at once on this phone, but I haven't experienced any significant slowdowns to make me believe that this is any less than a high performer. So I will admit, it's a little disappointing that the phone doesn't put the best bits and pieces around the powerful engine. While I did say that 8GB of RAM is more than enough for this phone, I will reiterate that it is still on the lower end for this entry-level offering of this year's Galaxy S line. The 128GB of onboard storage that you might fill up quickly with games and photos and videos is also fixed, as there's no SD card slot here. Samsung Pay has actually devolved a little, removing the MST feature from its tap to pay services, which removes one of its main draws and effectively makes Samsung Pay on par with Google Pay. And with everything that you might be enjoying on this device, the display is also scaled down to a 1080p panel. Now don't get me wrong, it's still a Super AMOLED display with an adaptive 120Hz refresh rate, and you can argue that the smaller screen means you don't really need Quad HD resolution, but it's still a compromise compared to the higher tiers in the lineup. And then there's the battery experience, anchored by a 4000 mAh battery that can be charged up using 25 watt fast charging, if you can get your hands on a compatible power brick because that is not included in the box. Battery life tends to be just decent, brought down to below average longevity, mostly when I'm trying to farm in the jungles before ganking my opponents. But again, the lack of super fast charging is compounded by the fact that you don't get any type of charger with the unit. I have plenty lying around, thankfully, but for those of you who want to keep the engine running as much as possible, you will have to shell out a little bit more to get that 25 watt charger, and that stings a little bit. Now wireless charging is a thing here, in both directions, but while convenient, that 15 watt charging means that the S21 is basically sipping power and isn't getting juiced up in much of a hurry. Now you can split the difference of speed and convenience by trying out cables from the sponsor of this video, Volta. Their new Volta Spark cable uses a magnetic tip so that one cable can easily switch among your various devices. In this case, just leave the USB-C plug in the phone and then you can snap the cable easily in with the strong magnet, using the 25 watt fast charger 
charger, you can have this cable basically be the one that can easily charge up your phone. The Spark cable supports micro USB connections, lightning connections, and USB-C with power delivery up to 100 watts. And yes, that includes the 25 watt charging that the Galaxy S21 supports, as long as you use the correct charging brick. Volta also has other cables with similar magnetic systems, so there are plenty of choices available for whatever devices you have and to minimize your clutter of wires. Volta 2.0 cables are available at the link below, but there is also a link to the Indiegogo page where the Volta Spark is currently in early bird pricing. So thanks again to Volta for sponsoring this video. On the hardware front, there are some omissions that might irk some of you, especially if you're looking between the S21 and the S21 Ultra. But when it comes to One UI, Samsung really doesn't know how to hold back. Despite the talk that they would minimize some of their own alternatives to Google's own app offerings, it still feels like Samsung is trying to put all of its features all up in your face. I tend to call this Galaxy Syndrome, but I learned a new word and it's superfluity. Related to the word superfluous, meaning needlessly extra. The reason why I think this is a fitting word is because it makes you think of the term superfluous fluid, which this phone still is as far as performance is concerned. But so much of what you might find, like the numerous toggles in the settings, the ads and the Samsung applications, the Bixby still taking up the power button function until you change it, all of these things are simply superfluous and almost get in the way of users who just want the power to use any app or play any game sprawled across a practical Android experience. Don't get me wrong, One UI has come a long way from what it once was. All I'm saying is that the road to make things simpler can get kind of complicated. Now as the lowest tier in the Galaxy S line, the S21 will obviously have the least amount of upgrades in the camera department. While it won't have the extra zoom or the massive main sensor, the camera package is at least very familiar. After all, these are virtually the same cameras as last year's S20. As per usual for Samsung Photos, saturation is vivid and exposure can be a little too bright sometimes. But overall, it's a good camera, supported by further features like single take mode or the new director's view mode. Of course, the modes that I just mentioned don't output more than 1080p resolution results, but if you get creative with them, the results can easily end up on social media networks like TikTok and Instagram. Now, Serious creatives will still get some love with 4K video recording throughout even on the front facing camera. Overall, this is a camera that we've used and actually enjoyed before, and this time Samsung decided to not overthink changing that up in their most affordable Galaxy S device. But Samsung's desire to make the S21 as affordable as possible means that the difference from the bottom tier to the top tier can feel like light years. As I mentioned in my Galaxy S21 Ultra review, I loved how Samsung made a lot of the right moves to justify the term Ultra. After all, the phone has the biggest camera, the most zoom capabilities, the biggest screen, bolstered internals, a bigger battery, and S Pen support if you're into that sort of thing. We'll always be happy with having more choices in tech, but the virtues of the smallest flagship Samsung smartphone clearly has to trade a ton of features to achieve this smaller build and that even smaller price point. I know that it's simply a dream to get an Ultra device packed into the same body as its smallest sibling, but instead you have to figure out for yourself what parts of the Ultra will actually force you to stomach the biggest and baddest and spendiest of the bunch. The last couple of years I've seen Samsung create offshoots of their mainline devices, spinning them off so that they can actually hit that lower price bracket. The Galaxy S10e was one of the premier examples of this outreach to casual users. While last year's acclaimed Galaxy S20 FE showed us that Samsung was open to changing up the formula once in a while. But the lessons of these phones seem to have become mainstays in the main line. And for that reason, I think we're now in an era where the base model Galaxy S model is just that, the base standard model for those who aren't treading into that power user territory. If you jumped on one of those Samsung spin-offs, there is actually little reason to upgrade to the S21, because it might actually be a more lateral move than it seems. But if you're looking for an entry point into the high-end Samsung world, or you're looking to upgrade from Samsung's own budget devices like the A-Line, the S21 is a fine exercise in using some well-tuned, powered-up basics. For more on the Galaxy S21 and the S21 Ultra, including real-world camera tests, check out the videos and the links that are appearing right now and are in the description. For more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you know when they come out. With all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and enjoy your tea, everybody.